OK, so from photons to biophotons. So now I'm going to talk about um, whoops, this part here. Um, and uh, how do our bodies and cells absorb and use this photon light energy? So again, we see this CCD camera image. Um, photon, photons are absorbed and convert to biophotons. And again, biophotons are ultra-weak photon emissions of biological systems, in other words, light. So we are emanating light from our bodies. Um, anything that is alive is giving off light. All living cells of plants, animals, human beings emit biophotons. They can't be seen by the naked eye, but they can be measured by special equipment now. Um, so again, this gives us a lot more insight as to the importance of light into health, and now that we know that we're actually giving off light. Okay, um, these are images from the same CCD camera that were taken in the Kobayashi lab. Kobayashi lab. Um, and in 2011, the do Dr. Kobayashi photographed this um, person's hand, and you can see that something's going on here. And he believes that the glow comes from chemical reactions that are producing free radicals, which we all know are very bad. Um, oxidative stress produced by free radicals is the measure of wear and tear on the body, which leads to aging. So increased biophoton emission in the fingertip here, and you can see here's the, the scale. So this is no emissions where it's completely dark. You know, as you go up from blue, green, um, yellow, orange, red, that's very strong biophoton emissions. And um, they now know that anytime you have that kind of situation, that it correlates with oxidative damage to the skin or what's inside. And you can't see it with the, the naked eye because the fingertips here look perfectly normal. There's, you can't see anything wrong with that person's fingers. So what do you think, the, what do you think caused the fingertips to, to have this damage? Anybody? Doing too much energy work. Right. <laughs> that would that would that would reduce the emissions. I'd make it better. Huh? Go ahead. Typing. Typing? Mm -hmm. Nope. Smoking. Yes. Who said it? Smoking. Oops. It's smoking. Mm -hmm. This person is a smoker. So just having that constant exposure to the cigarette smoke damaged damaged them. Damaged their skin there. Um, biophotons show rate of cancer growth. This is a mouse that they have implanted with cancer cells, which is growing, and this is a black and white photo of that same mouse, and you can see the, the lump from the, from the tumor. Um, and so biophoton emission also increases where there's cancer growth. So it's any, anytime there's damage to the skin or surface, it can also be anything that's growing inside the body that shouldn't be there. There's a direct correlation between tumor growth rate and biophoton intensity. So as the tumor is growing more quickly, it's going to give off even more biophotons. Um, this is caused by decreased antioxidant function and high metabolic activity of the cancer cells, which is reflecting, again, the oxidative stress in the cells. Uh, the more, more emissions and less coherence, and I'll be telling you about coherence here in a second, means there's illness. Fewer emissions, more coherence is healthy, healthy body. Um, and what POP, these are all, this is all um, POP and Kobayashi, but POP found that people with cancer, Dr. POP, have a complete lack of coherent biophoton emissions compared to a healthy person which emits coherent light. And um, they're already using this biophoton camera for diagnosing cam cancer. So anyway, what is coherent light? It's, pr it's pretty important um, concept, so I'm going to just spend a minute explaining this for anybody who doesn't already know. First of all, incoherent light, um, this is an example of sunlight. And here you can see you've got all different colors, and there, there are different wavelengths, right? So you're getting different different um, wavelengths of different colors. So, you know, um, and they're all coming out together. And they're not, they're not in sync with each other. They're out of phase. So you just kind of, it's just, most light that we see is incoherent light. Um, even here, oops, wait a minute. Even here, we see um, 
this is one single color of light, like LED devices or the blue light that they use for treating babies with jaundice, which are LED lights. Um, you get one, one, one wavelength of one color, but they're, they're not in, in sync with each other. They're out of phase. So those, those are both examples of incoherent light. Um, and here is coherent light. This is what they use in lasers. And you've got one single color, and they're all in phase with each other. So when they're in phase with each other, they have an additive effect. They get stronger. They, they increase in amplitude when you have the same waves that are kind of riding on top of each other. So you get very, very strong light. And where we see this, again, is in lasers, which are used in medicine. And also, hu healthy humans emit biophotons of coherent light. So we're basically shining like lasers um, when we're healthy. Um, colored light nutrients convert to um, coherent biophotons for healthy bodies. So again, anytime we're, we're getting the proper color and light nutrients that we need, whether it's from sunlight, the colors in our surroundings, looking at artwork, whatever it is that you're looking at, if you, any, our body is designed to take in this coherent light or incoherent light and convert it into coherent, healthy light if we're, if we're getting it, the nutrient um, levels that we need. And again, Dr. Pop has been doing all kinds of research in this realm, and he's found that biophotons are also in the foods that we consume. And um, in addition to absorbing light photons from our surroundings, like I just showed you, we also com com consume photons in our foods. So light energy, as we know, is present in plants um, because it's used during photosynthesis. And he um, believes that when we eat the plant foods, we take up their photons and we actually store them. And Lynn McTaggart's book, The Field, talks a lot about this. And um, anyway, the, the energy is, this energy is the driving force for all the molecules in our body. So he says that foods with coherent biophoton emissions are healthier for us. And it's understandable why. Um, and his biophoton readings actually confirm things that we know, that foods that are grown organically and ripened in the sun had far more uh, coherent biophoton emissions than non-organic and non-sun ripened foods. He also was started thinking about other kind of foods that we consume, animal products and that sort of thing, and has started making these links with cancer. So how can consuming unhealthy light sources in our foods contribute to cancer? Well, Pop again, he, he decided to test free-range eggs and found that they have far more coherent light emission, increasing in direct proportion to the amount of time that the chicken spends in the sun um, than eggs from chickens raised indoors. So you stick your chicken out in the sun and then it lays some eggs and it has coherent uh, emissions. If that chicken is outside all day long, then the, the, the eggs have even more coherent uh, biophoton emissions. Again, coherent is healthy, which is good. Um, and then, we, we know this from earlier, that in 1973, Dr. John Ott tested um, chicken eggs. He also um, looked at the lives, lifespan of chickens, and he said that chickens living under artificial light lived half as long, were more aggressive, and produced eggs with 30% more cholesterol than chickens living under natural sunlight or full spectrum lighting. Wow. So, You've got the, the aggressive thing there. It's kind of like the children in the classrooms that are stuck under artificial lighting all day long. Um, and, you know, and we already know that the lack of sunlight is shortening our lifespans because we're not getting enough and we, it causes all these other diseases that are directly linked with not getting enough sunlight or colored light or UV or whatever it is. Um, anyway, and I just wanted to point out that this, when you buy eggs that say cage free, this is, what you, this is where you're getting your chicken eggs from. They're not he kept in cages, but they're kept indoors, and they just don't have like little bars over them. So it's a marketing thing. So you really, you need to get free range eggs. And um, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there, since most people think cage free is good. Um, Dr. Pop and Chopra believe that consuming unhealthy foods, non-organic, poor, poor living conditions for the animals can harm our bodies and cause illness and cancer and prevent us from attaining higher levels of consciousness. Okay, so this is biophoton imagery, which, which shows actual acupuncture meridians, which is 
particularly interesting to me because of my acupuncture background. Um, and it's also interesting because it actually shows where the lines of energy where light comes in and we can, you illuminate the lines of energy in the body. So this, for example, that's the um, spleen meridian, that's the stomach meridian, if any of you ever had acupuncture, that's the stomach meridian, that's the bladder meridian, the back of the legs and the back. Um, and uh, he did this by shining light into the acupuncture point, so it um, temporarily illuminated the um, acupuncture meridians. This doesn't mean that there's illness in this person's meridians. It was just an artificial stimulation to get the, uh, the meridians to light up. Um, so anyway, we can see that now we have a better understanding of how we are transferring this light energy through our bodies. Cells communication in color. So again, Dr. Pop, um, he believes that biophotons are actually used by the cells to communicate with each other to switch on body processes. And this goes back again to Alexander Gervich in 1922 who did um, work with um, two onions and found that they actually communicated with each other. And I won't go into a lot of detail about that, but again, he knew that um, the cells of the different onions were communicating with each other through light. Um, so, and Pop also says at different color frequencies, biophotons perform different functions. And the molecules in the cells respond to and communicate via certain wavelengths or frequencies. Um, and all of this information up here correlates directly with all kinds of color therapies that have been around, you know, anywhere from 50 to hundreds or thousands of years. So five elements, which I'll be talking about a little bit later, the Chinese five elements model. Um, different energy meridians and emotions correspond to different color energies. So there's a direct correlation there. You, you actually use, do a diagnostic based on what colors people are being drawn to. Um, color puncture is a more recent type of treatment using colored light on acupuncture points. Um, spectrochrome was developed in the 1920s and uses different colors of light and they're shone directly on the body. Again, you're absorbing the light through your skin. Um, Syntonics is um, used by optometrists today and it d uses different colors, different, um, and they're, they're focusing directly on the eyes because they're optometrists. Um, <laughs> and, uh, this image here is actually a very recent image from 2011. Harvard Medical School actually engineered the first single cell biological laser from a human kidney cell. And it's pretty interesting how they did that. And again, if I had more time, I'd go into detail, but. Um, biophotons, coherence, and consciousness. So um, coherence, as we saw, it's a degree of order in the photons. When you have all those wavelengths moving together, you get coherent, coherent light. Um, no chemical reactions would be possible without coherence, according to Dr. Pop. Pop and Chopra both believe that these biological processes can be controlled and regulated by the mind and consciousness. And Dr. Pop says the improvement and optimization of consciousness is the most important healing power of our life. Dr. Chopra, the quote that we saw at the beginning, most genes are affected by thoughts and emotions. 80% of diseases are under our influence. The next phase of medicine has to be a true understanding of consciousness and how consciousness conceives, constructs, creates, and governs our biology. Okay, so how does art tie in with all of this? Art, healing, and consciousness. So um, how can we use artwork for healing in our homes, at work, and in hospitals? Uh, okay, well, there's actually been scientific research done about this, believe it or not. And um, science tells us that some original artwork can actually heal. Dr. Yvonne Clearwater, who's a senior research psych psychologist at NASA Ames Research Center, has done many studies about the healing effects of original artwork. And her studies show that there are some very specific things that you want to look for in artwork. Um, she says, landscape or landscape-like images are preferred. Uh, views with greater depth that draw you into the painting are very healing and preferred over close-up views. Um, scenes resembling water are also very healing. And scenes with animals, buildings, or people are less suited for healing purposes. Mm -hmm. 
And this is from a book called The Power of Color, Creating Healthy Interior Spaces by Marbury and Zagon. Um, they've written a lot about color and uh, using it in, in living and workspaces. Um, the right kind of artwork can have a very calming effect on the psyche and a healing effect on the physical body. And all of the images that are showing up on the screen are mine. They actually, that one looks much better in person. I mean, th mm. even if you could see it on my screen, it's like, <laughs> The colors are all shifted. Anyway, um, healing artwork in hospitals. Uh, again, Marbury and Zagon. Research into mind-body medicine shows the less stress patients feel, the more likely they are to recover quickly from an illness. Um, anxiety over treatment, unfamiliarity with the treatment delivery process, and the clinical environment all contribute to stress. Heart rate recordings and questionnaires showed stress in a dental clinic was much lower on days when a large mural was hung at the back of a waiting room. Very simple thing to do. Um, ceiling mounted pictures shown to highly stressed pre-surgical patients on gurneys resulted in lower blood pressure. So they stuck ce pictures up on the ceiling so they're not just staring up at a white thing and thinking about their upcoming surgery. They can actually look at a, a very peaceful, calming image up there and it lowers their, lowers their blood pressure. Again, really easy stuff to do. Um, it has become common to use artwork to distract patients from their pain or stress. Color is energy, so the use of original artwork is always preferable over prints or posters. And again, I don't know if you've taken a look at any of the paintings over here. Um, compared to an image on a screen um, or a photograph, when you see a real painting, it just has so much more energy and life to it. I mean, you're getting all of that color energy, and um, it's it's hard to it's hard to Technology has not been developed in a way that we can get really true reproductions. I, I don't think it'll ever be to that point where you can get the, the, the energetic sense of the work. Um, so what the philosopher says, um, inner light and work. Christopher Alexander is an architect, scientist, visionary. Um, he, he wrote a pattern language which pretty much revolu re revolutionized computer programming and another book, The Luminous Ground, um, which is a four part uh, book and he talks all about um, finding our connection to humanity through art, architecture and um, anything that we as humans are using and what happened was computer computer programmers kind of latched onto this idea to his, his surprise and kind of absorbed it and used it for w this was when the internet was developing so they realized we really need to take these concepts and make because if you remember back in the day you know DOS based pro very blue screen white light oh, terrible like who wants to interact with that so <laughs> not very friendly or it certainly doesn't make you feel closer to humanity um, Anyway, so he, he has some things to say about inner light in our work. Uh, inner light is the color quality which arises as something comes to life and as it approaches and reveals the eye, which he's um, calling consciousness. Um, the eye is the core of all living matter. It's a real thing, something which exists in the world. Some artwork has inner light and it's always created from a visionary state, which he means is an elevated state of consciousness. Um, when looking at artwork, does it make you think that you are somehow looking at an, inner, an image of your inner self? Ask yourself, does it make you feel more wholesome in yourself while, you're, while, while you are looking at it? Um, he also says, looking at artwork with inner light allows you to get closer to the eye and higher levels of consciousness. Mm. So again, really easy stuff to do. 